Hello there everybody, it's Sally here and welcome back to Tuesday Teaching Tips. And today, um, well, first of all, I was so delighted last week when I said, okay, we, we'd love to answer your questions and things and quite a few of you put in some, some queries for us. So we're going to look at them today. Um, we're going to look at one today and that is Katie's question. And Katie asked about what to do with students who look at their hands all the time. Yeah, This can be quite a problem. But what I want to do is look at the underlying causes that I think might be there. Why students feel more happier when they're looking down like this rather than engaging maybe up here. Um, so let's think about why they feel more comfortable down here, shall we? I think one thing is about their sense of keyboard geography. So we tend to introduce the keyboard in the first lessons. I'm sure like, like myself, you're doing lots of first lessons at the moment. And um, you spend some time talking about the threes and the twos and the threes and the twos. And, you know, you find certain white notes that, uh, that have distinguishing features like D in the middle. But then what happens after that? Do you continue to work on that and develop that? And I think on the whole we don't. And I think that is, um, that is one of the problems. Because if we don't have a sense of keyboard geography, that really, really affects us. We need to feel, our pupils need to feel confident at the keyboard. Now, how, you might say, how can we do that, Sally? Well, um, my very, very first Tuesday teaching tip, nearly two years ago, um, I think I use these. And these are my superstar specs, and I still have them, and I still use them. And they're great, because like anything, it's so much easier if you make it into a little game and have some fun with it. So, my students, um, they, I, I usually model it first, so I put the glasses on, and then they have to tell me to find all the three black notes at which, and you'll find it's surprisingly hard to do. You know, and then with my left hand, they might say, okay, can you find the two black notes, Sally? You know, and you find yourself kind of feeling away and you lose all sense of where you are. They're my, that's my three, and I, I think that's my two. I don't know. No, 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 that's not right. That's my two, okay, under pressure. Um, so they are a lot of fun. Um, you can then work on white notes and you can do things like um, find students wear them now and you say, OK, can you find a D? And they find a D. Play the note above. Play the note above that. Play a skip below. Oh, what note have you finished on? And they have to work out what the names of the notes are. And that really, really helps them get that sense of keyboard geography. So have a bit of fun, get some sunglasses, get something to make it um, quite, quite interesting, really. And, th and they get really quite excited about that, as I do, as you can tell. So that's one reason. Keyboard geography. Make sure that they are really, really certain of it. Even, even advanced pupils, it's a lot of fun to do because we tend to take it for granted and sometimes it's good to check in. Second thing is I think we give them brain overload sometimes. We know that playing the piano is a really complex thing, but we forget this. I think we do forget. So um, make sure that you're not overloading them. Um, are you asking them to read and play technically something that is a bit challenging? Um, in which case, they are definitely having a bit of a brain moment going on there. And um, the thing is that if you take the technique out of the reading, then things become easier. So technique, you can do that looking at the keys. There's no harm in doing that at all, at least to start with, because if they're needing to have ease in things, you can't um, give them too much to think about. Once they've mastered a particular technique, yes, put the superstar specs on, can they do it with their eyes shut? Extra level of challenge. And I can see various people are saying hello to me and I can't quite read. Oh, I can see Rebecca's watching. Hello, Rebecca. Do send me some uh, hellos if you like, please. Um, it's difficult to read it on my phone. That's what I like, some little thumbs coming up. Um, so brain overload, back to that. So I think another problem with brain overload is the reading. And um, if you've watched my Sparkle series, which is over on YouTube, and it's all there, seven steps to successful notation reading called Sparkle. If you go and have a look at that, then you'll realise that actually, we again, we ask them to do too much too soon. Reading is a long process. It's a skill that requires a lot of time to take. If you want them to read, 
without looking, they have to have something really that is well, well, well within their capabilities. Give them something that stretches them too much and that brain will go into meltdown. So really, really break down the tasks far more than you do. You'd be absolutely surprised how much you have to break it down. I'm always surprised anyhow. So we've looked at keyboard geography, we've looked at brain overload, and the third thing is for you, and this is about being persistent and consistent. Um, these are my two favourite words really for teaching because there's no good really doing a lot of work on not looking at your hands in one lesson and then neglecting it the next lesson. It has to be an ongoing feature, an ongoing focus, let's say, over several weeks. And if you in doubt of if you think, oh, I forget, well, get a post it note. That's what I do. I get a post it note. I write on here what the feature is. That's on the piano like that. And I say to the pupil, look, this is what we're working on again today. Let's see. OK, let's have some points and you make it again into a game. You know, let's have a point system. So every time you play without looking down where you get a point every time you play and you look down then I get a point. And you can put a little timer on, um, and that's also really nice to do. You know, just put a, a five minute timer. What are they doing at the end of that five minutes? Who gets the point? So, three things then. Check on that keyboard geography, play some games, have some fun with that, use some superstar specs. Be careful of brain overload, number two. Make sure you're breaking the, uh, the different tasks down so that you're not asking them to do too many complex things at any one time. Um, and also, in your own teaching make sure you're persistent and consistent and also have some fun enjoy yourself we're all too serious about this really um, so hopefully that's helped with getting to these underlying problems of why pupils look at their hands rather a lot next week Thomas asked about problems with students playing hands together so I'm going to be breaking down the progression that you can go through to get your students to play hands together really successfully any more um, problems or tips, ideas that you want from me, just jot them down below and we'll get to them eventually. Have a lovely teaching afternoon. I've got to go because that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Bye bye for now. I'm just going to read the notices actually. Hey, hello, hello, Helen. And I think that's Sadie. Thank you, Sadie. Loving the superstar specs. And I think that's, is that Vicky? Hello there. Happy teaching to all of you. Bye bye.